Hello and welcome into this installment of Catamount Football Weekly as we talk Western Carolina Catamount Football with head coach Mark Spear. I'm your host Daniel Hooker and coach jumping right in. Perhaps the biggest game in Western Carolina football in quite some time as the Catamounts, 22nd ranked in the country, went down to Spartanburg, South Carolina to take on the 5th ranked Wofford College Terriers. Again, a tough game for Western Carolina. Back and forth we went down to into overtime. Just talk about that game and, and the reaction from that fallout from that ball game. Well, you know, it's always uh, fun to play in a big ball game that, that has some uh, national relevance and Southern Conference relevance. And, uh, you know, I thought our guys went down and uh, you battled to the very end, you know, and, and it's, it's a game of uh, inches and a, and a game of a few missed opportunities, you know, and that's what I told the team afterwards. Uh, you know, you, when you play a, a quality football team on the road, um, they're, you know, a, a little bit's a lot. And, uh, you know, you, a, a, great, a great example of that was um, one time we ran into the punter. Um, Shimon Elliott comes off the edge uh, just the way we want him to. Uh, they, they had a little uh, a problem there with their operation from snap to, to punter. And, um, you know, he is two inches, literally two inches from blocking the punt and probably scooping and scoring right there and being a hero and changing the whole complexion of the ball game to sending our defense, you know, right back out on the field. And, and we didn't get on to Shimon because, you know, he went and did everything we asked him to do. He was two inches off, uh, two inches away from being a hero. And, uh, you know, he runs into the punter. And, uh, I mean, it was literally two inches. And, uh, but that's literally the difference in, in beating the number five team in the country and not. And there were little instances uh, or, or little plays all throughout that ball game that had we just made, you know, a play here or there, uh, the outcome of the game would, would be different. But that's, that's why they call it football. That's why the uh, ball's oblong and bounces funny sometimes. And, uh, you know, th that I hope help mo helps motivate our football team um, going forward into knowing, that, you know, as we talk about preparation through the week, as we talk about the mental preparation uh, before any ball game, that it is a game of inches and, and the team that uh, does those little things right are going to win. But I was awful proud of our football team, you know, uh, going down, you play the number five ranked team in, in America on their field. You take them to overtime, and you know the last play of the game. Uh, you know you're throwing to your best wide receiver who's open in the end zone, and uh, you know the the Wofford defense back makes a great play, and uh, we lose a tough ball game. But was proud of our effort uh, and proud of the way our our, our guys prepared uh, going down there, to Wofford. How tough is it, Coach? You, you could do everything right defensively, and next thing you know, they're still – you're thinking you're going to have them stop for a, a second and eight or second and seven, and all of a sudden it, they make the play and it's second and three or second and two because of that option and the, what their game plan was to kind of lean on. the, And that's what they do. How tough is that for a defense? Well, and you, it's tough, obviously, but we, you know, we prepare our players for that going in. At the end of the day, uh, we, we, that's our job. You know, we tell them, do your job. and. Uh, they focus hard on, uh, Wofford focus hard on what they call yak yards, yards after contact. And uh, they've always been uh, really good. As, as you say, you hit them at the line of scrimmage and you look over at the change and it's second and six. Um, but, you know, there, there, we had some, some technique breakdowns. Uh, you know, with, with this, you, you have to um, be sure that you have assignments and then Within your assignment, there's certain techniques, and we didn't have a lot of assignment breakdowns where our guys were just wrong. They didn't know what they were doing. Uh, you know, a lot of it is getting off of an arc block by an offensive player coming at one of our defense players, and they throw low on your legs, which is perfectly legal. Um, you know, and you have to defend that block. And what Wofford does such a great job is the timing of the back right behind that block. So even if you don't get cut, you're defending a block, having to get off that block and make a tackle on a guy who's running full speed and you're getting off a block. So 
uh, Wofford just has done it for so long um, that uh, you know they know what they're doing. Number one, and, and uh, you know we don't see that a lot. And that's what makes it tough. But uh, you know we we had we gave up some some big plays there on defense that uh, weren't assignment errors as much as just the technique error or just Wofford sometimes making a good play. You know, uh, they got good players too. That's what that's, that's what I tell my wife sometimes. You know, why didn't they do this? Well, well, they've got good players too. There's a reason they're number five in the country. But, uh, you know, we, we, we'll have to get better as we go on and play some more option teams coming up. And, and uh, you know, you always in hindsight look and say, as coaches and players, what could we have done different or better? And uh, I know there's some things as we move forward, uh, you know, getting ready for the option teams down the road that, 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 you know, we can do. You always are trying to find a way to get them off schedule. And uh, so, you know, there's some things we could have done better, obviously. But, uh, you know, on the night, uh, you, you, we, we felt like, you know, we did, gave ourselves an opportunity to win. Uh, you know, I, I hated putting our defense right back out there before the half. Uh, you know, one was off the punt I was just talking about. You know, our, our defense does a great job stopping them on their territory. We're, you know, they're getting ready to punt. We're going to have pretty decent field position. And we run into the punter. We send our defense back out. They do a good job. They stop them again. We get the ball. We're backed up. And I, I, as the head coach, because uh, Coach Glenn asked me, you know, what do you want to do? You want to just take a knee or you want to run our offense? And uh, I said, let's run our offense. You know, I was trying to get something going. And, you know, what I was looking at, what I usually do a lot of times is if we have a good first play, let's run it. You know, if it's second and ten, well, let's take a knee. Let's just kind of see what that first play brings. Because um, we had, you know, 50-some uh, seconds. And, uh, you know, I told him to run the offense. And, and uh he called a play, and, and we threw an interception, put our defense right back out on the field, and then they end up scoring a, a field goal. So that was unfair to our defense. You know, that was probably six to eight more plays that they played that they shouldn't have had with three more points on the board. And, uh, you know, I'd like to have those three points back at the end of regulation. So uh, not only are we asking our players to learn from this and both staffs, but, you know, I, I should have known better as a head coach, and I made a poor decision there. Coach, you talked about uh, the last play of the game. Obviously, your best quarterback going to your best wide receiver. Well, Terrion Robinson probably became the best wide receiver, perhaps at least by the numbers, 199 career catches. Talk about Terrion Robinson becoming the all-time receptions leader at Western Carolina. Well, there's a reason for that. Just, number one, because he's a really good football player. He's smart. He's intelligent. He knows how to get open. Uh, he understands our schemes and concepts. Uh, he's got really good skills, great hands. Uh, but most of all, he's a great person. He works hard. And guys that have a little bit of God-given talent that work hard do really good things. You know, we talk about that with the trails all the time. Uh, and Terion's the same guy. He, he's a quiet guy, um, just comes to work every day, um, and is an outstanding leader on our team and, and um, just a great person. And uh, he's going to be successful in life. And uh, so for us, it's no surprise. And that's it's guys like Terry on that I, I tell the young guys, you know, there's a guy that leads by example. Follow him and you'll do great things. So awful proud of Terry on. We've got a lot of work left to do. Uh, get him in the, up in those uh, mid to high 200s before he gets out of here and make it hard for the next guy to go break that record. But we're awful proud of Terry on. And, you know, that was a tough, tough call there at the end, and um, you know uh, we'll leave it at that. But uh, you know, uh, Terry Allen was open. I wished uh, it was a little bit thrown behind, a little low in a way. It could have been a little bit of better ball by Tyree, but uh, that's what you want at the end of a ball game. You, you, your playmakers going and making plays, and the guy from Wofford had good coverage on him, and and uh, you know they went and made a play, and we did. I think a lot of Catamount Nation agrees with your assessment of the last play, a frustrating ending to that ball game. But, Coach, something that came out telling the last week before we or after we had already recorded our show here, uh, two players named 
Players of the Month in the month of September. Talking about Tyree Adams, Player of the Month for his second consecutive September. And then Marvin Tillman, named Defensive Player of the Month in September. Talk about those two young men. Well, anytime again, you can be recognized uh, by the media or your peers. Um, you know, that's a good thing. It means uh, that uh, they've caught the attention of, of our opponents and, and the people that are, are uh, assessing our ball games. But, um, you know, both of them have, have been key to our success. Obviously, they're going through September. And, uh, you know, again, the goal is to try to be players of the month again in October because uh, this is a huge stretch that determines, you know, what kind of season you have. I talked to our team Sunday. Um, you know, uh, in terms of a football game, I said it's halftime. You know, we're, we're in game six, uh, just finished game six of a 12-game season. Uh, you know, and you always want to come out of halftime uh, positive. You know, if you're on defense, you want to three and out. And if you're going out on offense, you want to put points on the board. So, um, you know, for those guys to, to uh, get those accolades through the month of September, it's going to be huge for our football team, whether it be those two, uh, to to come out and try to uh, have a great October. And it all starts this weekend with East Tennessee State. And coming out of the locker room for halftime of the, for the second half of our season, uh, we got to get off to a great start. You know, I, I've told our team, that's the most important uh, game of the year right now for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's the next. Uh, number one, it's at home. And uh, number two, it's at home. You know, but number three, you come off a difficult loss like you did against a nationally ranked opponent at their place, uh, you know, how are we going to respond? I, I talked about uh, all the way back to the 2014 season, we were in a very similar situation. We were getting ready to play uh, Chattanooga, both of us undefeated, and, and Chattanooga beat us that day, uh, and they were the better team that day. And we go down to Sanford the next week and, and play a really um, uninspired, unmotivated ball game at Sanford and get beat and we let the loss of Chattanooga in 2014 create another loss um, down at Sanford the very next week you know I think we, we we played really hard that day against Chattanooga and got beat by a really good football team and then I just remember going down to Sanford and we had no energy uh, it was kind of like the season was over and uh, we, we were shell-shocked and and so we can't let uh, that let history repeat. We always talk about through a loss, what did you learn? And so that's what I learned from the 2014 season when we were in a similar situation. So, uh, you know, we're playing at home. Uh, you know, it's it's the beginning of fall break here at Western. We're asking our students in the Catamount Nation uh, to come out strong and uh, for our students to, you know, stay, um, you know, one extra day and, and come out and not a better way to start fall break than now here against East Tennessee State, but uh, we got to come out and rebound and come out for the second half of our season on fire, playing with great emotion, great energy, and uh, you know go have as you preluded with your question a great September. We got to start off and, and uh, create a great October. Well, we talked about it at the end of the Catamount Sports Network postgame show about not letting the Wofford game have a hangover and not losing to Wofford back-to-back -back weeks as you've got ETSU. They're a good enough football team. I think Carl Torbush has them playing extremely well. It's a team that is still learning how to play and learning how to win. They're 500 coming in, Coach. What have you seen out of the Buccaneers as we look forward to the Blue Ridge border battle this weekend? Huh, Blue Ridge border battle. I like it. Um, they're, they're a really good football team. Um, you know, they, they are playing well. Uh, they are, are playing, I think, at a high level on defense especially. Um, they are tough to run against. Um, they're they're going to knock your run out. That's their their goal. And, uh, you know, some te teams talk about it. I think all teams talk about it. And, but they're committed to, to stopping your run game. And then, uh, you know, they play solid on the back end. And, and they don't give up you know, the big plays. And they, they're a defense that makes you earn, you know, everything that, that you get. And, uh, you know, they, they shot, shut down a, a really good Mercer, um, you know, offensive attack. And, uh, you know, had a big game uh, last Saturday, um, you know, against Robert Morris. And, and uh, you know, they, they um, did a nice, really nice job against uh, Citadel. Had their opportunity 
to beat Silt a little early in the year. So um, the games they've lost have, have been battles. You know, it's not, um, uh, you know, the only really lopsided score was really James Madison, you know, the defending national champs. And, and uh, you know, they, they play hard and played hard against James Madison. So um, it's, it's going to be a, a battle. And, uh, you know, it's going to take us uh, playing our best football to go beat them. And, you know, they right now, you know, as they come back, we're, we're over against East Tennessee State. So, uh, you know, as they've reinstated, I know we've won, won ball games against East Tennessee State, but since they bought, brought football back, uh, you know, we're over against this squad and had a tough loss that, that was, uh, you know, very uh, – a hurtful loss last year that, you know, I'm not sure we ever got over last season. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot of respect uh, for that program. You know, I've known Coach Torbush a long time. Um, the days when I was a grad assistant here in the early 90s, I used to go to football camp at North Carolina when he was the linebacker coach for Coach uh, Mac Brown. And uh, we, we've become close friends and, and got a lot of respect for him. Uh, and, and their football team, you know, they're, they're, we know a lot of their staff. And, uh, you know, he's got an outstanding staff, and they've done a good job recruiting. So uh, they've got good players, and, and uh, you know, it's going to take our best effort uh, to go, go beat them offensively. Um, it all starts with the quarterback. I mean, he's just a gamer. Is he on anybody's uh, Walter Payton list? Preseason, no, but the guy is a competitor. It just shows on film. Uh, he, he threw some tremendous balls against us last year that were NFL kind of throws. You know, I, he probably had his best day against us last year. I don't know how he could have had a better day. Uh, you know, some of the receivers were making acrobatic catches, great catches, and, and uh, you know, offensively, um, they, they are schematically very good. They do a nice job of, of understanding, you know, what, where your weaknesses are in your defense and, and attacking those. So, uh, again, got a lot of respect for them. Should be a heck of a ball game. Well, Coach, again, you talked about trying to get the students to stick around one more weekend. A busy, busy weekend. Joe Lasher Jr. in concert before the game presented by Ingalls. Community Day. We got Kids Day. Kids coming in their uniforms and their cheer uniforms and their football uniforms getting in. Just a big all-around game. And, of course, it's a big game because, again, it is that Blue Ridge border battle. It is ETSU, the mountains of eastern Tennessee against the mountains of western North Carolina. Again, just a big game all the way around. Well, it is. And, and uh, you know, it's a pivotal game for both programs. And, uh you know, hopefully they're going to bring a big crowd as well. But uh, uh, it's it's a big ball game for both programs because, uh, you know, as you said, they're they're trying to take the next step, and 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 this is a big ball game for them getting above 500. And uh, you know, it's a big ball game uh, for us trying to get win number five, and uh, you know, stay in contention for uh, this this battle for. Uh, you know, the SOCON. And uh, so it's a huge game. And, and you know, we're, we're asking our students to, again, uh, stick around one extra day and, and uh, you know, enjoy uh, college football at its best. You know, Western Carolina versus East Tennessee State. And, you know, it is a big community day. I know all our football players are going to be at the local elementary schools on Friday, opening up car doors, uh, you know, inviting all the elementary kids and their, their moms and dads out to the game on Saturday and, uh, you know, honoring the Eastern Band of the Cherokee uh, tribe uh, as we do each year. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a, a big group from uh, the Cherokee Nation out. And, and uh, again, it's, it's just a huge game. It's our next game and, uh, you know, we've created a great environment here at Western Carolina, thanks to the Catamount Nation. You know, I, I know a lot of the, the opposing coaches um, talk about what a fun place it is, because wh whether you're the home team or the visiting team, you like to play in front of a big crowd and, and a loud crowd. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things when our players go and play in these big SEC stadiums, they, they you like playing in front of a big crowd. So. We've created that in the Southern Conference, and that's because of the Catamount faithful. And they were out huge there at Wofford and wanted to thank our, our, our fans for uh, being out. We, we had as many or more as Wofford did, and uh, that, that was awesome. And, and I, I want to thank the Catamount Nation for that. But 
Uh, let's follow it up this weekend at home. And, uh, you know, everybody in the western uh, hills of North Carolina and the eastern hills of Tennessee, uh, let's all converge on Cullowee and have a great day. Well, as if Joe Lasher Jr. in concert presented by Ingalls was not enough, as if the football game was not enough, the community day and, and the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indian. Don't forget about the Black Rock Outdoor Great Rubber Duck Race coming up, the second annual <laughs> Catamount Double, uh, Rubber Duck Race going down Cullowee Creek, all that taking place I'm on Saturday on afternoon. The, I'm betting on the number three duck. He's taking the, the number three. Number he's three. taking number three. I think I'm going to take number 88 just to, just because, <laughs> you know, he's got to find something here at the end of the year, right, Coach? That's it. Maybe uh, he can get a win. Uh, well, looking forward to it again. Don't forget, you can catch that game on the Catamount Sports Network. Airtime of 2.30 ahead of the kickoff at 3.30. Game also can be seen on ESPN3. But we, we want you here in the Cullowee Valley as Western Carolina battles ETSU in Southern Conference play. All out of time for this week for the coach. I'm Daniel Hooker saying so long for now.